I just wanted to start today off by singing all that I knew of, um, I'm pretty sure that's the national anthem, um, one, because I had a really awesome experience today, and I got to shoot some guns, which I made a vlog about, which was awesome, but also our instructor, and every instructor at the place where we were shooting some guns, um, they were either, they were in the military and I don't know, man. I just thought what better of a way to start off our boot camp or not even our boot camp or training transformation, um, by giving thanks to the people that actually let us be able to have some, some freedom of speech have the ability to have some freedom and be able to reach financial freedom. I don't know. I'm in a very patriotic mood today. So, any, anyways, um, I, I mean, okay. I don't know why we started off like that. It was, that was pretty emotional for me to sing that in front of you guys. Um, I don't know. I shot, I shot an, a light machine gun today and I just felt really honored to be even in a country that lets me shoot a light machine gun at a, at a piece of paper. And I also shot an M4 and I also shot a Galil. So, and now I have the opportunity to get on, get on a YouTube channel in front of all of you guys to say whatever I want. I can say what, I can say whatever I want. I can say whatever I want right now. Banana boat. Uncle Trumpet Jumping Jack. This is weird. I've never felt this before. I love freedom. Freedom of speech. What else do I want to say? God is real. God is real. What else do I want to say? Monkeys have probably tried to eat their own poop before. What else do I want to say? Microplastics are killing you. YouTube will probably take this one down. 
Um, what else do I want? Anyways, okay, we get the point. We have freedom of speech, and we also are seeking to have financial freedom, which is why I'm here with you guys today. So hopefully you guys say thank you to the troops who are helping us and helping us live in, believe it or not, a pretty awesome country because I know a lot of you guys are like, oh, the United States sucks. Well, you suck, okay? There's some people that fight for our right to be able to do this shit, okay? And they're literally putting their life on, their li on the line every fucking day for you just for you to bitch and scream about a bitch ass country that you live in? Shut the fuck up, punk ass bitch. Fucking blue haired, annoying ass bitch. Sorry if you have blue hair, but you know what I mean. <sighs> Anyways, let's teach you guys how to get some financial freedom. Figured out, figured we might, come on guys. Figured we might as well start off with some, some fucking patrioticness before we give you guys the first piece of the strategy. Okay, so. This is going to be one of many videos. Who knows how many parts this is going to take. We're going to break this down as simple as possible for you guys. Again, who knows how many parts this is going to take. We're going to take as many parts as we need to in order for us to drill this shit into your guys' mini ass fucking brains, okay? So, you guys remember our confluences. Yes, you guys remember everything that I've ever taught you ever in the entire world, right? Wrong. So, go back and re-watch, re re-read. Start off. Welcome to the fucking strategy video. That's a fucking strategy video, bitch. Okay? All right, focus. Okay, so there's going to be several, several parts of this. To preface, these, this first one that I'm going to give you guys, this is like beginner. And then as the rest of this entire trading transformation goes on, the more fucking advanced it's going to get because there's going to be more and more things that we can add to this to make it better. Okay, so you're probably going to watch this and be like, TGR, you're such a piece of shit. You taught me the fucking basic bitch strategy. Well, guess what? Little fucking Timmy, you don't know shit about trading yet. So shut up and eat your pacifier. You're fucking binky. Okay? So, basic bitch, bitch strategy, step by step, here we go. Okay? Step one. We treat our four hour and our hourly as our daily bias. And keep in mind, there's a million other ways to trade. This is just my strategy. You guys wanna trade like me? This works for you? Cool. Remember, think back to our psychology videos. Think back to literally videos like one through five or whatever it was before we started Confluences. Watch those shits. And remember what I was telling you guys about how this shit's going to take time. And if my strategy doesn't make sense to you, get the fuck out of here, okay? And I, that's, boom, like I taught you something, get the fuck out, okay, if this shit doesn't make sense. So, the way that I like to trade is I like to catch one to three hour moves, okay? So ideally, I'm in the market for one to three hours. Sometimes it's a little bit less, but ideally I'm catching like a three hour movement, okay? So with that in mind, are we really trying to figure out a weekly move? Not necessarily. So I like to stay away from the daily time frame because if we look at the daily time frame, that's really giving us a prediction of, oh, okay, where is the where are the next couple days going to go? I don't really give a fuck about that. We want to scale down one step lower and start looking at, okay, where are the next four hours going to go? Where are the next hours going to go? Okay, and we're going to treat that as our daily bias or as our bias going into our trading day. Okay, so treat the four hour and the one hour as our bias. Okay, so what does that mean? Look, whoa, chill out on, look! 
<laughs> nah, lowercase. Look. Okay, look at four hour trend. Okay, we're looking at the four hour and the one hour trend. What is something that we know that's just basic ass shit? Higher time frames hold higher power, right? Because if the four hour says, hey, look, we're gonna go fucking up, and the hourly says, wait, no, we're gonna go down, longer term, if the four hour time frame is saying, we're going fucking up, the hourly is probably hitting a fucking retrace on our ass. Okay, so with that in mind, we wanna look at the four hour trend, and that's gonna be our overall bias. We see the four hour trend, right? Is it a fucking uptrend or is it a fucking downtrend? Simple as shit. We're not trying to predict reversals. We look at the four hour trend and we know, okay, this is where the next four hours are likely going to go. Too bad, so sad if we take a loss because the four hour breaks structure. Ideally, we're not trying to catch reversals on the four hour. Okay, we're trying to stay within the trend. So, or, Bias is based on four hour trend. If boom, simple as shit. Our bias, our overall daily outlook on the day is based on the four hour trend. If the four hour is in an uptrend, what does that mean? Higher highs, higher lows, breaking structure to the upside, cool. We're bullish. If it's in a downtrend, we are bearish. Lower lows, lower highs. Step four, look at the one hour trend, okay? What does the one hour trend let us do? It helps us decide what lower time frame we are going to scale into to end up looking for a trade, okay? So we're gonna look at the hourly trend. If If the one hour trend is in line with the four hour trend, we're looking at the one hour trend, and if we see, boom, the four hour is bullish and the hourly is bullish, bet we can scale down into the five minute and look for execution points within there. Okay, we cool? If, If the one hour is in an opposite, okay, I'm gonna change this to opposite. If the one hour trend, if the one hour trend is in an opposite trend than the four hour trend, then we have to execute on a higher time frame, AKA the 15 minute. Okay, so if the four hour is bullish and the hour, <coughs> and the hourly is bearish, what do we get to do? We get to scale down onto the 15 minute time frame and then look for execution points. Cool? Cool. We just laid out how we find our daily bias and then how we're going to scale down. Simple, simple, simple. And again, this is the simple baby ass shit. You're probably going to be like, TJR, I only found fucking one trade this week. It probably hit take profit. If you're going to follow this step by step, rule by rule. If you don't follow this step-by-step -step, rule by rule, you'll find 20 trades and be on the, that on the fucking spectrum. I love freedom of speech. Okay, step six. Okay, remember, four hour. If it's bullish, cool, we know that we're looking for buys. We're, we're, we're bullish for the day. And then if the one hour is bullish, cool, we're still bullish, we get to scale down into the five minute time frame and look, look for execution points. Reverse, if the four hour is bullish and the hourly is bearish, what does that make us? Still bullish, higher time frame holds higher power. Where, where can we execute down to? The 15 minute time frame, okay? We need higher time frame execution points, higher time frame confirmation. Uh, cool, cool. From there, what, what are our ex Execution points. 
What are our execution points? Well, what do we always most often look for when trying to take a trade? First things first, where's the top of a trend going to reverse from? Liquidity sweep. And what is something that we know about pretty much the majority of the time every single market open? There's going to be liquidity sweep. Okay, so our execution points are going to be as so. We're going to, how should we do this? We're gonna go A, that was a one. A, liquidity, liquidity sweep plus break of structure. What are we looking for? A liquidity sweep on a higher time frame, not on the 15 minute, not on the five minute. Okay, we wanna see it on the higher time frame. So what does that mean for us? What are our higher time frames? What are we only looking at? One hour and four hour. Boom, so liquidity sweep. One hour or four hour draws of liquidity. Okay, and break of structure on five minute or Okay, so step one, we understand our bias, okay? Whatever the four hour is telling us, that's what our bias is. From there, if we have a bullish bias, what are we looking for? We're looking for draws of liquidity underneath lows on the high time frames, on the four hour and the one hour, okay? So if we're bullish, we're looking for one hour lows and four hour lows. We're marking those out. The next step within that, if, if we get into those draws of liquidity, once we see those levels hit, if we don't see those levels hit, nothing happens. The way I teach my mastermind students, I say, find the four hour trend. If, we, if we're bullish, cool, we highlight the high time frame lows, we get our hands and we shove them into our ass and we don't do anything until those prices are hit. Once they're hit, we can scale in into either the five minute or the 15 minute based on both the four hour and the one hour trends, right? So if the four hour is bullish and the hourly is bullish, then we get a sweep of lows on either the one hour or the four hour. Cool, we scale down into the five minute time frame, and the next thing we're looking for is a break of structure. If the four hour is bullish and the hourly is bearish, what are we looking for? We're still looking for lows and we can still use both the hourly lows and four hour lows. Draws of liquidity doesn't change based on the trend, okay? So if we're bullish on the four hour but we're bearish on the hourly, we're still looking for lows. We highlight every single low that's based on the hourly and the four hour chart. We put our hands on our ass until those prices get hit. Cool, we wait, we see those prices get hit. When, where can we scale down into? The 15 minute time frame. What are we looking for following that? A 15 minute break of structure. Cool, cool, moving forward. Step B, again, once both of these have Once both of these have happened, we're looking for our third confluence, okay? What are our, what is, what are the other confluences that we have? Order block, fair value gap, breaker block, equilibrium. Those four, okay? Damn, come on. Okay, now let's break this down again. Four hours bullish, hourly is bullish. Boom, hands in our ass. We know that we're waiting for lows to be swept. We see a one hour low get swept, perfect. Muddy hands out, boom. We can scale down to the five minute because the four hour and the hourly are in line. From there, we wait for a five minute break of structure. 
Boom, what do we move down to? The last and final step. We're waiting for our third confluence. We're waiting for either an order block to get hit, a fair value gap to get hit, a breaker block to get hit, or equilibrium to get hit, okay? We don't do anything until these bitches get hit. We don't even do anything once they're hit. We need one more step. Pause this right here, okay? Moving forward. If the four hour is bullish but the hourly is bearish, we are waiting for a high time frame liquidity sweep still to the downside because the four hour is bullish. We're waiting for either hourly lows to get swept or four hours lows to get swept. Our hands are in our ass until that happens. We see those lows get swept, muddy hands come out, 15 minute time frame scale down. We're waiting for a 15 minute break of structure. From there, we're looking for our third confluence. We're either looking for an order block on the 15 minute, fair value gap on the 15 minute, breaker block on the 15 minute, or equilibrium on the 15 minute. Cool? Cool. Last and final step. We need to see buying pressure or selling pressure in order to execute out of these confluences, right? Because if we just enter right when they get hit, how the fuck do we know if they actually held, right? If we think back to breaker blocks, remember, how are these breaker blocks even formed? It's off a confluence, confluence getting invalidated because it just gets blown through. We don't want to end up being fucking busted through like a fucking breaker block. We want to wait for our confluence to get hit and then buying pressure out or selling pressure out in order to execute. Okay, so what does that look like? Literally just a green candle up and out of the order block, a green candle up and out of the fair value gap, a green candle up and out of the breaker block, a green candle closing above equilibrium, okay, or a red candle closing underneath an order block, red candle closing underneath the fair value gap, red candle closing underneath the breaker block, or red candle closing underneath equilibrium. Okay, so we need to see buying or selling pressure out of these confluences and tomorrow when we go into actually pointing this shit out on the chart, I know this is a lot to write down. I, the goal of today, we're already 22 minutes, in, 22 minutes into this bitch. I just want you guys to write this down so we can get our strategy down. And again, this is the simple shit. I, there's another piece that we're going to add on to this after, but right now, this is all we're going to get. Okay, last and final, A, B, C, D, E. Okay. Once you see pressure, execute. We are going to get into take profits. We're going to get into stop losses once we start adding more and more stuff, okay? All I want for you guys today is to understand this, okay? This is how we find our overall daily bias. Right? We're looking for the four hour trend and the one hour trend. That's how we figure out what time frames we're going to scale down into. Okay. From there, we figure out our execution points. Okay. We understand that we're looking for a liquidity sweep. Okay. And again, again, this is the simplest shit. We're going to add more to this and we're going to add different things that we can change within this as things happen, whether it happens during pre-market or post-market. Okay. But again, that forget about that shit right now. This is all I want you guys to know. Because this is, this is the simplest fucking strategy. We did this with my mastermind, my first mastermind. And all of them literally like just by being disciplined, using risk management and executing purely based off these steps alone. Don't do anything else besides these steps and you will be successful. I promise you, no matter fucking what, I guarantee you, you will be successful within the markets. How many trades will you take? I don't fucking know. It's not going to be a lot, but you will, you will win more trades than you lose if you follow this shit word for word, bar for bar. A lot of you guys are going to get into the market and then try this shit and you're going to take 10 trades in a single day and you're doing it wrong. I, I haven't taken, I haven't seen a single trade using this strategy the past two weeks. Okay, so if that gives you any sort of idea of like how simple and how basic this is, but also it's really fucking effective. This is like the most beginner, the most simple ass shit. And again, we're going to add a lot more onto this afterwards, 
Okay, but right now, this is the basic shit that I need you guys to understand. Write this shit down. This is your first, this is like the fucking base of your strategy. If you guys can't understand this, I don't know what you're gonna do. This is, this is like just, I learned this today. This is like a regular Glock. And then we're going to add an 18 fucking barrel attachment and then a switch and then a fucking flashlight and then a red dot and then a fucking beam on that bitch. And then we're gonna be lethal killers. But right now we just have the fucking base of the shit. And that's what this is. Cool. And because you guys learned this, I don't wanna see any of you guys taking fucking trades on Monday. Cause you guys still don't know shit. We haven't even talked about how we can identify all of these things together. We just had to break this down just to explain this shit for you guys. Tomorrow we are going to talk about where that even lies and how to understand where the fuck it is on the chart. Okay, cool, got it, awesome. I'll see you guys tomorrow.